Hi, I'm Shannon Higgins, a core member of the Humanode Project. In this episode of Humanode in Simple Terms, I would like to talk about the Humanode DAO, or Decentralized Autonomous Organization, the Vortex. Okay, as we all know by now, one of the biggest features about decentralized financial platforms, such as blockchain or Epoch CRDT, are that they are decentralized, meaning there is not a single central institution like a government or central bank to govern or control the platform, and the platform itself is spread across a variety of computers, networks, and nodes. But it is fair to say that governance is important, especially when privacy, security, and the financial well-being of the community is at stake. Let me go into just a little bit of history here. Based on the concept of a decentralized organized company proposed by Daniel Larimer in 2013, in 2014 the founder of Ethereum came up with the idea that by using smart contracts after a DAO was launched, it could be organized to run without requiring the standard human management structure in place. The fundamental idea was that all members of the organization or community have a share in the decision-making process. Naturally, it was thought that there are areas that can be handled autonomously, but others that require human input, and a platform could be created to strike the right balance. So when Ethereum was launched in 2015, such DAOs were enabled on Ethereum. One of the most famous and infamous projects that spawned from that happened in the year 2016. In hope of finding a way to eliminate human error and the manipulation of investor funds, a group of developers came up with the idea to address governance in a decentralized platforms for a virtual venture capital fund called the DAO. Well, to cut a long story short, Although the concept was well thought out, there are some loopholes and flaws in the code itself. And the DAO was hacked. And although later recovered, the equivalent of 50 million US dollars worth of funds were temporarily stolen and the project kind of crashed and burned. The good news though, is that the idea that decentralized platforms need to find a way to govern in a decentralized fashion with everyone participating survived. And based upon the lessons learned from the past, various forms of decentralized autonomous organizations have emerged and continue to grow, and perhaps even one day could replace traditionally structured businesses and or governance. Okay, so yes, the humanoid DAO, the Vortex, what does it do and how does it work? Who gets to take part in it? Let me answer the who part first, and the answer is simple. Any humanoid can participate in the Vortex. Unlike many DAOs out there, the humanoid does not require you to have tens and thousands of dollars worth of assets nor do you have to be a technical wizard or a genius with a vast pool of computing power to participate. One humanoid, one vote. It is as simple as that. Now, in order for me to explain about what the Vortex does and how it works, let me start out by talking a little bit about our belief concerning governance. The main question we had was if a decentralized network could truly be decentralized if the means to govern it were only in the hands of a few people. In traditional cryptocurrency, businesses, and even governments, you have a handful of people who guide the course of the token, company, or country. These people are usually highly trained, get the best education so that they can make the right calls when it is needed, and are entrusted to make sure that the company or country grows so everyone involved can have a safe, secure, and prosperous good life. When everything is working, things are great. 
But the problem starts to happen when things aren't going so great. And of course, when governance is tied to power and wealth. Unfortunately, what often happens is that power is consolidated. Those who have power gain wealth, and those with wealth gain power, while everyone else gets shut out, shut down, and told to shut up and fall in line. Basically, without major checks and balances that have power in themselves, say, such as corporate law, or fair and well-thought-out national or international law with teeth, the structure tends to become super centralized. Small groups of people or dictators rule, and we can simply end up in revolt and chaos while everything burns down to the ground. On the flip side, if we just say screw central authority, people can choose what is good for themselves by themselves, and we set no governance, the likely result is that either you end up with nothing getting done because we can't get a consensus, or people are simply too busy with other stuff and can't be bothered. Or we can't come to a decision because we don't know what to do. Or decisions get controlled by populism. And well, that's just as much dangerous. Because usually that leads to a few groups of people who will take advantage of the situation. You see, all you need are a few individuals or groups of people that manipulate the opinion of the masses to pull the strings in their favor, and hola, you end up with a handful of people with all of the power and money, creating an empire behind the scene that has no checks and balances. So, what do we do? Our answer was to create a balance. The humanoid system was designed to be run for the people, by the people, or for the humanoids, by the humanoids. Rule number one is, as mentioned, one human equals one node equals one vote. One vote is not stronger than any other, meaning your vote is equal in power to, say, the co-founders of Humanode, or those of us who are the core members of the project. Let's say a billionaire becomes a Humanode. I don't know, say Jeff Bezos or Warren Buffett. They could have all the money in the world, but as a Humanode, you still have exactly as much voting power as they have. Rule number two is those that govern the system are here to serve the community as a whole. No, seriously, no matter what rank of a governor you are, that does not grant you power and wealth, or power or wealth, for being so. You do not get perks, you do not get direct financial compensation for your participating. You do your job right, and the community as a whole benefits, including you. The only power you gain is the power to recommend projects and changes to the system, and the power to vote on them using your one vote that is equal to my vote. Okay, so how does it work? Well, there are basically three classes of participants in the vortex. The humanoid who goes through the proper biometric processing and receives network transaction fees, but does not participate in governance. A delegator, which is a humanoid who decides to delegate his voting power to a governor. And a governor, which is a humanoid who participates in the voting procedure according to the governing requirements. The governors, in turn, are divided into four tiers. The citizen, who participates in Tier 1. The senator, that participates in Tier 2. The legate, who participates in Tier 3. And the council, participates in Tier 4. Any humanoid is free to and encouraged to take part in the governance, and they would all start as a Tier 1 citizen. And yes, there are requirements that must be met for each tier of governance. Yeah, I know this hierarchy sounds like a power structure that creates an elite class with more power than others, but it is far from that. Once again, the ranks do not give any additional voting powers to their holders. Instead, they are given an ability to make proposals on crucial matters on each tier. For example, a Tier 1 citizen would be able to make proposals on the product level, 
say concerning the UI or logo design, or projects that assist in better user experience. But a Tier 4 Council would be able to make monetary and protocol level proposals. Okay, let me put this into context. Instead of running a financial platform, let's say we wanted to run a restaurant and wanted to serve a full course meal to our customer. It is natural that you would want professional chefs to cook your meals. But even in the kitchen, the chef who specializes in making the best chicken in the world may not be the best chef to work on your chocolate cake for dessert and may not be the best person to ask about the design and layout of your menu, the layout of the tables, the design of the interior, how to interact with the customers, or balancing your books and marketing strategy. We want those who have knowledge of how the restaurant should look and feel as a user to be able to give such proposals, and those who know how to balance the books or cook the perfect chocolate cake to be able to consult amongst peers who have the qualifications as accountants or have proper professional experience as chefs and propose changes that would best satisfy the needs of everyone involved. At the same time, just because a person is a great chef or a great accountant doesn't mean we want to trust him or her with all the keys to the vault, allowing him or her to dictate the whole operation the moment he or she joins. So in order to strike a balance, the Vortex is built on two important concepts, proof of time and proof of devotion. This means that progress in rank occurs when a person spends enough time governing the system and has shown his dedication through either participation in the projects inside the Humanoid ecosystem or by creation of such projects which get approved and implemented. A human node becomes a citizen as soon as it starts to participate in the voting procedures. Each month, governors will be faced with governing requirements they have to meet to be eligible for the next month, say such as participating in at least one-third of the votes. If the requirements are not met, then a governing node is converted to a normal human node automatically. And no, you don't lose anything in the process, nor are you penalized. Now, to become a senator, one would have to govern for 12 months, but no, they don't have to be consecutive. Then to become a legate, one would have to govern for 24 months and somehow participate in projects that are being developed inside the system. It can be anything from development, to sound design, or even commissioned studies and researches. And finally, to become a council, one would have to govern for 48 months and have any of his proposals approved and implemented by the Vortex. His or her participation in the said project is also required. And yes, I will say this one last time. But the only power you gain from taking part in governance is the power to participate in making the system better for all, and the power to suggest projects, proposals, and changes to be voted on according to your rank. For your information, a quorum is reached if at least 33% of the governors vote on a proposal in a given time frame, and if 66% of the governors out of the quorum vote to approve a proposal, then the Vortex will consider it approved. And just as a note, humanodes that do not participate in governance are not counted to reach a quorum. As we move forward, if we find this system does not work, we will have the power to open discussion, suggest changes, and vote on it for implementation and change. So, as you can see, the future of humanoid depends on the participation of you, me, and every human. Every vote counts, and every vote is crucial. There are more details concerning the Vortex in the white paper, which should be in the link below, but I hope this video was able to give you an idea of how the humanoid DAO, the Vortex, is structured. Thank you for joining me. 
and ta-ta for now.